So you want to play your ITF tournament. Well, and you want to go down to some tournament nearby. It's in the United States, in Turkey, it's in the UK, it's in the EU. You got shot by your surface, you got to sign up, right? First thing you need to do is get an iPin. Without that iPin, you can't do anything. And it's free, so I think the first, just go to the ITF website, search iPin, sign up for your iPin. If anything, uh, I think they have a promo, like the first year it's free to play a tournament. Um, they're trying to charge $20 later, but it's, it's worth it because iPin, when you go to the ITF website, it has all the facts, it has um, your ranking, it's who you played, it's your entire history. Keep your iPin on you. When you go to the tournament, the ITF is funny. I entered the ITF tournament one month. Deadlines are like a month in advance, five weeks in advance. So you have to be careful about that. You have to sign up. You cannot just not show up for an ITF. It's, there's a big penalty if you don't show up for an ITF. So many ITF not no shows and they ban you or something like that. So if you're gonna can't play the tournament, you go to the ITF site and you just withdraw. There's no penalty. Some tournaments expect you to pay when you sign up. Other tournaments like the Asia Open in Pattaya, you sign up on IPIN and you pay when you get down there. Normal fee is like a thirty dollars. It could be higher, it could be lower, depending on the courts. Um, the other thing that people don't realize is you have to sign in. So, for example, the tournament started on Monday. There's a sign-in period, like on Sunday. You have to go down there and sign in and say you're there. And they always have this at all the major events. The Paya tournament, they're pretty cool about it. Like, I called in because it's in another city and I was working. Um, they did make arrangements for my playing time because based on my um, based on my location because I, I was going to have a hard time being down there. Um, so they're pretty accommodating about scheduling, I believe. The rule for ITF is one match a day for singles. Now you have to keep this in mind. What's going to happen is the schedule will come out and they won't say what time you play. They'll say in order of play. So in court number one, they'll list all the matches for that day. And they'll say something like, uh, at 9 o'clock, you have uh, Paul versus Gary. Uh, next match is uh, John versus Joe. And then the third match would be like uh, not before 12 or not before 11. That we can get a kind of feel for how much time is going to expire to your matches, okay? So you got to check your, your order of play. For example, I played at like, I was a seventh match on court one. It started at nine o'clock. There was a rain delay in the middle. You know? And that, there's no adjustment of time for that. It's order of play, okay? And so you can wait all day, you know, and, and they'll, they'll call it eventually. I get tournaments are two or three sets, super, uh, tie breakers. Uh, they're uh, ad scoring. They normally have referees. The higher the graded, the more likely you have a referee. Um, when they're called, they'll call your match as the match goes on. So say on court one, Joe and Paul play, and I'm the next match on. When Joe and Paul are in the middle of their set, they will say, uh, please report to court one, Gary and John. Please report to court one, Gary and John. Or they'll call you to check to see if you're there. And they'll do a last call. They will default you if not present during the signing period. The other thing that's cool about ITF tournaments is normally at one point they'll ask to sign up for doubles. And it's a sign in. This is when you need your iPin. Because at Padia they wouldn't give me my iPin. You had to have it. Like people weren't able to get their iPin, they had to go find their iPins. So you have to bring your iPin with you, you sign up, put your iPin down, so you know you have an iPin. And you can find a doubles partner there. You can just It's like a national tournament. They do this in juniors also. You can walk around and say, Hey, I'm Gary. I'm 40. You want to play doubles? You know? The consideration for doubles, though, is the ranking system is different. So you have to be aware of that. Um, for example, in a grade 2 ITF, you win one round, you get 10 points. You win two rounds, you get 20 points. What's the significance of that? Gain 20 points, I'm ranked 400 in the world. I survived two rounds in grade 2. Grade 2... Because it's a grade two, attract stronger players. I mean, we had the number one player in the world for the 60s, um, top 50 player for men's 35. You know, the, the field is stronger, so they, they they reward you for a stronger field. And they'll normally be at dinner. We have a dinner in the Asia Open on Wednesday. Okay? But one match a day, one doubles a day. This is the last thing. I had a bye the first day, and I played my first round the first day. And that's normal because they want everyone to show up the first day. They want to make sure they, they know who's here. On Tuesday, I showed up, and what happened was, they, um, I was ahead of the schedule. I was in round three. My opponent was still in round two, so I wasn't supposed to play on Tuesday. I had to wait a day. So those are ITF questions that you don't normally hear about or know about when you're playing matches. 
and that's something you need to know and no one really tells you they expect you to know these things ask around make sure you're not dis 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 disqualified make sure you have an eye pin make sure you sign up early